Now, from the makers of Cold Water Omo, John Steed and Emma Peel walked into the wrecked office at the Industrial Development Limited and looked around them. Steed reached out with his umbrella and touched the shattered hinge of the door. Extraordinary. Would have been so much easier to have used the handle. Hmm. The guard who was knocked out says the man was enormously big, nearly seven feet tall, wearing dark glasses, hat, gloves. Yes, sounds like something thought up by Warner Brothers in 1940. Mm -hmm. The odd thing is that in spite of the maze of corridors, he knew exactly where to find Lambert. And he was bulletproof, too. Look, two flattened bullets. Must have been fired at point-blank range. Adds to the confusion a bit, doesn't it, Mrs. Peel? The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. Episode 2 of this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel tangle with some Japanese wrestlers and realize that the skill of karate can be a deadly gift. Mother had given Steed and Mrs. Peel the task of investigating the mysterious deaths of Walter Carson, Andrew Denham, and Samuel Hammond. All had been killed violently by a vicious blow to the head. All had been very important businessmen, heads of commercial and engineering companies. And now there was a fourth death, James Lambert, whose body lay on the carpet covered by a sheet. John Steed threw the two flattened bullets down on the desk and looked around him. Uh, nasty. You say that Lambert was on the telephone when all this took place? Yes, that's right. Miss Forbes, company secretary. She heard it all. The crashing as the door was broken down, Lambert's screams, the revolver shots, and then a curious whip-like sound. Whip-like? Well, that's what she said. After that, Lambert groaned and the line went dead. Hmm. Well, let's see what the papers on the desk have got to offer. Well, looks like the usual business stuff. In tray, out tray. Oh, what's this? Mrs. Peel, you remember Samuel Hammond's diary? He had mm -hmm. an appointment with some business people called Harachi, didn't they? That's right. The Japanese electronics firm. Well, he must have done business with them, and so did Lambert. Look. Mrs. Peel took a letter from Steed and read, Honorable gentlemen, our representative, Mr. Tosomo, will be in your capital London city on the 12th. Would you kindly lift the telephone for the appointment? We remain obediently and faithfully, etc., on behalf of Hirachi Corporation, etc., etc. Well, isn't that nicely worded? Well, it would appear that Mr. Lambert did lift the telephone. He made an appointment for three o'clock. Hmm. Now, let me think. Hirachi were in the news a few weeks back, weren't they? They've developed some new circuit element to replace the transistor. Really? Well, it could revolutionize the electronics industry. Lambert may have been competing for the European concession. Steed moved over to the sheet which covered the body and lifted it with the end of his umbrella. Well, this honourable gentleman's out of the race now. It's difficult to compete with a broken neck. Mrs. Peel moved forward and looked down at the body. One second, Steed. Look at the position of his head. He's been hit from the front, yet yeah, there's not the slightest bruise on his face. Conclusion? Honourable lady, conclusion? Yinko. I beg your pardon? Yinko. Honorable lady, mind translating for ignorant gentlemen? My Japanese is a bit rusty. It's a blow from the deadly art of karate, delivered by an expert. Breaks the neck easier than a hangman's noose. Oh, were there many experts around? Mm -mm, just a few. Barely a handful in the whole of this country. Then we'd better consult one of them, hadn't we? Characteristically, John Steed handed the assignment over to Mrs. Peel. And she, also characteristically, followed through with efficiency, finding herself in the corridor of Sensai's Karate Dojo Gymnasium. 
she approached a beaded curtain, parted it, and entered the practice room as Sensai himself refereed about. Mrs. Peel walked up to the practice mat and tapped Sensai on the shoulder. I'm Emma Peel. Mrs. Emma Peel. Wait. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Now, interrupting so, please state your business, Mrs. Uh... Peel. I'm interested in karate. Interest is for the onlooker. From students, we require dedication. We have nightly attendance for practice and demonstration. We never tolerate absentees. Well, I, pr I appreciate that. Then <laughs> appreciate to Mrs. Peel that karate, unlike judo, is not a sport. It is a science, an art, a discipline. The word karate... Yes, I know. It means empty hands. But the hands, though empty, can become more deadly than any weapon. It is the concentration of force. Like this. The development of skill and courage. Nothing can stop it. Come to this practice block. Sensai led Mrs. Peel across to a large block of wood. With shattering force, he brought his fist down upon it. Mrs. Peel winced. Sensai smiled and flexed his fingers as though he'd been patting a feather pillow. Some of my students can split a roof tile with one finger. And one, whom we call Oyama, the tall mountain, can shatter a door with a single stroke. How interesting. So you see that it is difficult for a woman to compete in such company. Well, it's the idea of the competition that appeals to me. Then I suggest that perhaps fencing would be more suitable to your purpose. Oh, forgive me if I disagree, Mr... Uh... Here, I am known as Sensai, the knowledgeable one. Sensai gave Mrs. Peel a curt bow and clapped his hands. From the far end of the room, a white-clad figure appeared. It was a woman dressed in practice robes. She moved swiftly and silently towards them. This is Oyuka. And Oyuka means? The immovable one. Oyuka, this is Mrs. Emma Peel. How do you do? Mrs. Peel is leaving us now. Oh, what a pity. I'm interested to know that you don't encourage women. Um, presumably Oyuka is an expert in karate? I am a third dan at judo. Oh, a first at karate. There are few men who could pass me if I didn't wish them to. And few women? No other women. Oh, to me that sounds just the teeny weeniest bit like a challenge. I should not try it, Obaki. Obaki? It means foolish one. Mrs. Peel is invited to try. <laughs> I've never been able to resist a straight fight. Mrs. Peel placed her handbag on a nearby stool and took a step to the left to pass Oyuka. Oyuka made a simple karate attack. Mrs. Peel countered with a judo defense and attack. Oyuka drew back her left arm and with palm uppermost thrust her hand out to land a blow beneath Mrs. Peel's nose. Mrs. Peel grabbed Oyuka's wrist from above with her left hand, swinging it back. Oyuka doubled up. Mrs. Peel brought her right hand down firmly on Oyuka's neck. Mrs. Peel sidestepped, got a firm hold of Oyuka and threw her through the Japanese screen. You fool, Oyuka. You attacked her as a woman. But she has the skill of a man. A bad mistake, Oyuka. Oyuka, the immovable one. You should rename her, I think. What's Japanese for amateur? Anyone know? While Mrs. Peel was brushing up on her karate, John Steed was paying a visit to the Harachi Corporation. He walked swiftly into the main entrance, nonchalantly swinging his umbrella. At the reception desk, he raised his bowler politely and addressed the secretary. Ah, excuse me. I uh, represent industrial development. Uh, yes, sir? Uh, Mr. Tusama is expecting me. Uh, three o'clock appointment. Oh, yes. Please be seated, Mr. Lambert. 
Ah, well, I'm afraid I'm not, Mr. Lambert. John Steed. Uh, Mr. Lambert is regrettably indisposed. You have a letter of authority, then? Oh, yes, indeed. Here we are. The young lady read the letter quietly, picked up the phone, and made a brief call. Mr. Tusamo? Yes? Mr. Lambert is indisposed. Mr. John Steed is here from Industrial Development. Please, ask him to come in. You may go in, Mr. Steed. Steed looked around him at the mini screens of the reception room. The door is the glass panel with the black dragon on it, Mr. Steed. Oh, yes, of course. I suppose I should have guessed. Uh, thank you. Ah, Mr. Steed. Do come in. Please to be seated. Thank you. You will forgive briefness of meeting. Time is short and there are many representatives. Oh, I do understand. You are acquainted with our recent development? Well, I'm aware that you've produced a new circuit element to replace the transistor, and I'm here to negotiate the rights for concession. This heralds a new age, Mr. Steed. Computers no bigger than a matchbox. Pocket television. Radio smaller than a wristwatch. You have a worldwide patent? Hardly necessary. The manufacture of the element is complex and would require capital outlay of 50 millions. Ten years before we have a competitor. So the concession will go to whichever company offers you the largest slice of profit. I suppose it's pointless to ask what offers you had already. <laughs> Regret that other competitors cannot be disclosed. Ah, well, naturally, I shall have to consult my board, but I'm sure our offer will be favorable. Of course, we can't compete with your production facilities. Uh, may I look at these photographs of your plant on the walls? Of course. Allow me to explain them. While Tosano was giving facts and figures with his back turned to the desk, Steed quickly flipped open a folder containing a list of competitors. He then raised his umbrella. The handle swung back and revealed a miniature camera. The shutter moved silently. Smart work, Steed. Yes? Your next appointment is here, Mr. Tosano. Thank you. Mr. Steed is just leaving. Well, you'll be hearing from us shortly, Mr. Tosano. Goodbye. Thank you. This way out, please. Goodbye. <laughs> Tosamo turned to the glass-fronted door on the other side of the wall. Footsteps were heard approaching. Framed against the glass was the shadow of an enormous man, at least seven feet tall. Just got out in time, didn't you, Steve? <laughs> Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.